Welcome to Live Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Jesus works it in me. All that Christ accomplished through becoming man and by his self-sacrificial death and his exaltation to the Father's right hand is what he now works in us by his life. What he accomplished in his death, he works by his life in you and me. And the Bible says, if God, while we were yet sinners, offered his own son for us in that he died for us, will he not with him now through his life, now that we've become his children, give us all things? Oh, friends, be encouraged that God will work it in you through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he has made unto us wisdom. It is through Christ that your eyes are open to begin to see the incredible righteousness he enjoys in the Father's presence that he now forms in you and me by his Spirit. This incredible sanctification, this life of oneness, of separation unto the Father, he now forms in you by his Spirit. This incredible redemption from all the powers of sin and death and the glory that he enjoys with the Father that he now works in you by his Spirit. And today I want to show you something that I pray all the time. I pray all the time from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, that by Christ's eternal Spirit, he perfects me with his selfless, self-sacrificial love for the Father. That perfect love for God, he says in John 14, verse 31, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the whole world may know I love the Father. Christ gave himself to God for you and me. What we could not do because of the sin nature, he did because of his heavenly holy nature for us. And now that same spirit by which he offered himself to the Father without blemish, he works that spirit in you and me. And that's the subject of this devotion, to help your faith when you are confronted with your own failings, with your own weaknesses, with your own shortcomings, <clears throat> and you feel, I'll never change, I'll never be like this, I'll never be like that, I'm always like this, I'm always like... That whole earthly way of thinking is eradicated out of your conscience through the wonderful blood of Christ and a beautiful spirit of faith, the faith of the Son of God is formed in your heart and mind by which you say, Father, I am yours through Jesus. My life is not my own. I am yours. I am Holy Spirit, soul and body, yours, Father. Oh, how I feel the Holy Ghost as I say these words. Why don't you say it with me? I'm yours, Father. You see, the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23 and verse 24, God, who is faithful, will sanctify your whole spirit, soul, and body. And he who is faithful will also do it. You see, you can count on God to work it in you through his Son by the Holy Spirit. So listen to this verse here in Hebrews 9, verse 14. How much more surely shall the blood of Christ, who by virtue of his eternal spirit, his own pre-existent divine personality, has offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Dead works would be everything that you do, no matter how well meant, how ceremonially beautiful, but it's all self. It's all self. It is you trying to be something. And that is what Christ came to liberate you from. That it's not self. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory 
Colossians 1.27. It's Christ in me that is my life. The life I now live in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God, Galatians 2.20 says. And it's His eternal Spirit that the Father works in you by which you are made alive with Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2 says. You're made alive with Jesus, so much so that the life He enjoys at the throne of God is now formed in you, shaped in you. That life, that eternal life by which He perfectly offered Himself to the Father, that eternal life or that eternal life spirit by which He offered Himself an unblemished sacrifice to God is what He forms in you. You may say, Okay, okay, I'm listening. And I feel the Holy Spirit trying to get through to me, but what does that look like? Okay, look here in a Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 12. Philippians 2, starting at verse 12. What does it look like? Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I'm absent, work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust, with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ, not in your own strength. It is God who is all the while effectively at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for His good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. So, do all things without grumbling, <clears throat> fault-finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves <clears throat> that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guiltless. Oh, I love those words. I love standing before the throne of our loving Heavenly Father without any consciousness of failure or sin and to look at him radiant with his glory and to keep crying, Abba, Papa, Abba, Papa. I love you, Father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for perfecting your love in me. Thank you for perfecting your love in me for others, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, I love standing in that place of perfect acceptance in the beloved Ephesians 1 verse 8. I love standing in that place of blamelessness. Not the blamelessness of me never making a mistake. No, it's much more powerful. It's the blamelessness that Christ enjoys in the light of God's holiness that He now works in me and gives me that consciousness that He has made me accepted holy and without blame before him in love, Ephesians 1 verse 4. Oh, dear friends, the riches with which we are blessed in the heavenly realms through Jesus Christ are unsearchable riches of Christ, as he says in Ephesians 3 verse 8, that you may show yourselves to be harmless, guiltless, innocent, uncontaminated, blameless children of God without blemish, fault, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining clearly in a dark, dark world. What does it look like for Christ's eternal spirit to be formed in me by which I'm enabled to give myself to God and work out daily my own salvation, in fear and trembling, in, 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 in having uh, a reverence, self-distrust, serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever my grieve God's spirit, that I feel this, oh, no, 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 I'm not watching that, I'm not listening to that, I'm not, no, 
Why not? Because you feel the tenderness of that blameless spirit of Christ in you shunning what would grieve the Holy Spirit and what would cause you to be a reproach to yourself. Oh, hallelujah. I love to live in that beautiful spirit. Last but not least, what does it look like? For that eternal spirit by which Jesus offered himself without blemish to God to be formed in you. And what is it going to look like, feel like? What, what are you going to notice in yourself? Colossians 3, verse 12 and 13. Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives who are purified, holy, and well-beloved by God, by putting on behavior marked by tender-hearted pity and mercy, kind feeling, and lowly opinion of yourselves, gentle ways and patience, which is tireless and long-suffering that has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper, good attitude, good mood. Be gentle and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference, a grievance, or complaint against another, readily pardon each other. Even as the Lord has freely forgiven you, so you must also forgive. That you have this reservoir of forgiveness. And if then somebody says to you, oh, oh, I shouldn't have done it that way, you say, you're okay, I love you, no charge. That's pardon. You didn't charge them. You didn't hold it against them. Love covers a multitude of sin, the scripture says. Come on. Meditate on that Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13 from the classic Amplified. Take it to heart and let the eternal spirit by which Jesus offered himself without blemish to the Father be formed in you and continuously sprinkle your heart with that blood of Jesus to give you a true heart and sincere faith by which you may draw boldly near to the throne of his grace while being washed with the pure water of his Holy Spirit throughout your whole body so that your whole body is filled and flooded with God himself and that you may enjoy the richest measure of his divine presence and live anointed day and night. Anointed simply means embodied of the Holy Spirit. That you live filled with the Holy Spirit, as Paul would say, be full of the Holy Spirit. I so believe today that this is what God is working in you. So be encouraged. Don't be weary with yourself. Keep committing yourself and keep believing in that eternal spirit by which Christ gave himself to be formed in you to enable you and empower you to give yourself wholly to God day and night. Amen. Have a good day.